Dispatcher Chris Solomon's day is difficult, demanding and life-saving. Without him, the Helimed team couldn't do their jobs. Hundreds of people owe him their lives. But no problems, we're on his way, Chuck. Cheers, old bye. But this morning, the 999 screens are blank. It's Chris who needs help. He's arrived for work with a pain in his chest. Paramedic James Vine is concerned. His symptoms are worrying enough. But the readout on the cardiac monitor is unmistakable. Chris is having a heart attack, and it's massive. ECG looks a little bit dodgy at the moment. Not 100% sure what it is. OK, but we'll just err on the side of caution. Uh, it's going to mean a trip down to LGI. OK, let's pop that up there for us. Even in the 21st century, a simple aspirin is the most effective first aid for Chris. It will help thin his blood. Oh, God, I'm out of water. They'd like him checked out at hospital, but it's so early, its helipad isn't open. It's going to need to be the secondary site. What time do they open? Eight, Eight. o'clock. Um, <coughs> or we're best with a crew. I'll have a crew. Yeah. A blood vessel in the back of Chris's heart is blocked. James can see that much from the trace, but it's about to get a lot worse. Chris goes into cardiac arrest. His heart has stopped beating. He's no longer breathing. If James and Lee don't start CPR in minutes, he will die. The blow to Chris's chest is designed to help kickstart his heart. Lee and James know heart massage is only effective in a tiny minority of cases, but their friend and colleague's life depends on it. It's time for even the Helimed team to dial 999. Hello, can I have an ambulance, please, at Leeds Bradford Airport, the uh, air ambulance space, please? Connect Electro. The chopper's defibrillator has been brought in. It will deliver a massive electric shock to his heart. It takes two jolts, but at last, Chris's ailing heart starts to respond. All right, Chris, go on, kid. Chris's colleagues are fighting to save his life. He's in the best possible hands, but there's a serious problem. Unless the fire crew that manned the Leeds General Infirmary helipad can be contacted, Chris's best chance of survival may be lost. Come on, Chris. Chris? You with us, man? Chris? Chris? Imagine knowing only you can save the life of a critically ill colleague. It's the terrible responsibility faced by three members of the Helimed team this morning. Helimed team dispatcher Chris Solomons had a massive heart attack minutes after he arrived for work. After a shock from the chopper's defibrillator, his heart is beating once more, but it could stop again at any moment. Chris, it's James, you're at work. It's just oxygen, it's just James, you're at work. Just relax. And there's a problem. It's early morning and the helipad of the Leeds General Infirmary is still closed. Helimed 99 can't take off unless the hospital's fire crew can be raised. They don't open till 8 o'clock in the morning. We're on the early shift today at 7. Uh, it's now 7.35, so we may just get lucky, but we have to wait and see. Got an ambulance on the way, and uh, we decided there was the best thing to do with Chris. So you see he's back with us now, so thank God for that. Paramedics Lee Davison has treated hundreds of patients with heart attacks, but never a friend and colleague. He and James Vine are assessing Chris's treatment so far to make sure they're not missing anything. OK, should we just reanalyse everything then? We're back in normal sinus rhythm, OK? He's got a lining, he's had no adrenaline, he's had aspirin, he has a buckle and CPR and shock. Chris is in agony. He's experiencing the symptoms that kill 120,000 people every year in the UK. That's to shock him uh, twice, trying to get the heart back into a, uh, a normal rhythm. And we've worked on him with some uh, CPR as well and managed to get him uh, get some output 
and uh, we're just trying to stabilise him now to get him down to the LGI so that we can get some of the cardiac team to uh, look after him from there. Oh. All right, hey, Chris. Chris. All right, mate. You're okay. You're at work. How is? Oh. What's hurting? Right. Okay. Uh, oh. Never got the aircraft out so fast. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, we can use it. Uh, if we can't, it's going to be a real pain oh, for us. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Cheers, thanks, buddy. Cruise here. A ground ambulance crew are about to join the fight to save him. Oh, absolutely um, dreadful for us, obviously, with it being one of our own, and um, just took us on the hop a little bit there. Obviously, we just didn't expect him to come in like that, but um, that's what we're trained for, and, um, and and we've managed to get him back. Hiya, mate. Hiya. I just need trolley off. Yeah. All right. We're just debating whether to go by air or not. Because he's had He's had an arrest. Yeah. Is yeah. We've we've got we've got output. Yeah. Yeah, he's had uh, been shot twice. He's been with chest pain. Um, looks really pale, clammy. He's um, went. He went off on us after about ten minutes, right. and we've shot him twice. He's had CPR. We've got him back at the moment. He's been speaking to us. Right. So we're going to go on to trolley initially. If we can get hold of the LGI, we'll just trolley him to aircraft and take right. him. Okay. What we're going to do, lads, is if we can just. Hang on two minutes, we're, we're just sorting the um, helipad out. Yeah, I think yeah. so. It was just uh, with a couple of extra pairs of hands. Yeah, we didn't know, what, didn't know where we were up to at that stage. But at last, the team has some good luck. The LGI's fire crew have been located. Chris will be able to fly straight to A&E. Bad day at the office. Not even had a cup of coffee yet, have we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Not three, one, two, three, lift. He's still wired up to the ECG. James isn't taking any chances. Yeah, Chris just gave me the uh, shit of my life, I think. You'll be able to monitor Chris's heart in the air. OK, one, two, three and lift. Keep going, lads, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Beautiful. Right there. All right, buddy. OK, bud. Okay. Chris is responding well, so well, that James can crack the odd joke. OK. Try not to do anything stupid like that in the flight on the way down for me, because uh, me and you are barely talking as it is at the moment. Oh. All right. But he knows his patient's not out of the woods yet. Chris is five minutes away from the primary angioplasty unit of the Leeds General Infirmary. It's there a team of surgeons deliver the most up-to-date treatment available to heart patients. Uh, the plan is that um, Chris is going down to the LGI, uh, down to the CCU down there, to be assessed by the cardiolo cardiology team, uh, trying to open the coronary artery that's blocked. A tiny tube will be inserted into Chris's heart and the blocked artery opened out. A tube, or stent, will stop a clot reoccurring. Three, one, two, three, and lift. Many of the hospital's fire crew ran to work this morning. They knew the patient was one of their own. All right, mate, we're just coming to coronary care, OK? <coughs> Chris has played an important part in saving the lives of hundreds of heart attack victims by ensuring the staff of this unit have a full breakdown of a patient's medical history. There's no one to do that for him today, but James and Lee will do their best. Uh, two shocks, 200 and 300, back into a sinus rhythm. Systolic's been initially hypotensive at 70, uh, 500 fluid challenge, which has brought him up to a systolic at 118. Right, score is still about a step. James and Lee have kept Chris alive long enough to give him the best chance of a good recovery. We've come into coronary care at the LGI. Um, obviously, this is what they're specialising here, so um, he's in the best place that he can be. Um, we're just getting him transferred over to uh, the uh, team here, and then obviously we leave him from here. But going on from here, they'll probably take him to the uh, cath lab and uh, just have a look with the uh, with the X-ray and see what's block where the blockage is, and uh, and they'll determine where they go from there. Within an hour of his attack he'll have had angioplasty. But they know he's not out of danger yet, and it's time for them to leave. Now remember Helimed dispatcher Chris Solomons, whose sudden heart attack led to the sort of medical rescue mission he normally organises himself. Let's catch up on his case. Chris is lucky to be alive after a cardiac arrest. It would have killed him if he hadn't been in the office with paramedics James Vine and Lee Davison. They were able to save his life by shocking his heart back into rhythm. It's our bread and butter. We deal with that every day of the week, but uh, it's very, very different when you're having to do it for someone you genuinely care about. You know, he's a good lad, he's one of our own, so uh, you don't want to see harm come to anyone. 
Now Chris is recovering in hospital after a procedure to open out a blocked artery in his heart. I was scared. I'll tell you, I was scared. Because at one stage, my hands just, they, they were just like that. And I just couldn't open them or move them. And the pins and needles was horrendous. I then realised that there was something going on. Because uh, I knew this wasn't any type of indigestion. Because it was going down my legs as well, pins and needles down my legs. And it's not a thing I would like to experience again. I wouldn't like anybody to experience it again. Little more than 24 hours after the attack, Chris is sitting up in bed, enjoying goodwill messages from his colleagues. All the guys at work have turned around and said, if there's anything they can do, to let them know, which is brilliant, which is brilliant. So, uh, just wait and see how I uh, get on. Uh, but I'm missing it already. Chris began to feel the symptoms as soon as he arrived for work that day. He was effectively dead for five minutes, but his memories of that morning are hazy. I don't know if I was getting up, or if they were picking me up, and then I don't remember anything after that until I'm on the floor by the table. There's Lee and James looking over me. Uh, I don't know where Cobby was at the time. And then two other paramedics. Less than a week after his attack, Chris is well enough to return to work, just for a social visit. Hi, mate. Hey, mate. Hey, mate. Not too bad. Okay. Just be careful. I'm fine. He's here to thank the two men who saved his life. Hi, Chess. Still a bit sore. Is it? If laughter's the best medicine, he's come to the right place for treatment. We just got rid of chalk, man. <laughs> oh, give up. Don't make me laugh. It hurts. <laughs> It'll be a month or two before Chris is even ready to think about returning to the dispatch desk, but at least he now knows how many of the team's patients feel. Knowing that it was James's official last day, I wanted to come up and see him before he went back out on the road just to say thank you. I mean, I didn't know Lee was going to be here. He kept that secret from me. Uh, but no, I just basically wanted to see James before he went off duty because I knew I'd see Lee another day. Um, but to see them both in the same day is great. And just to say my thank you to him. It's a long road to recovery, but Chris is determined to get back to work with the Helimed team. I would much rather be back at work doing my job than be sat at home not doing anything.